Hello there! Today we have an NEC project which I've managed to get hold of and today I figured that we would take it apart and have a look and give it a good clean to see what we could use it for. This uh, projector is dated from the purchase year of 2002 and uh, you can see we've got front expansion ports here. We'll have a little tour of the projector and you can see what it features and I'll even give you the part number. Okay, so looking at what um, inputs we have here. The first thing we have an S video in. We have our composite inputs as well. Uh, the best part is that we could actually connect up something like a, uh, a Nintendo 64 or a Sega Dreamcast or even a VCR player. We also have left mono in and it looks like we also have an in here which I'm not too sure of as this is the first look but they would assume that's either audio in and audio out quite possibly. So maybe the RGB goes in and then you plug it in there and it comes out there which to me is a bit pointless but hey I could be totally wrong and we also have a control connection here which I assume would be for controlling the remote so if you were backstage and you needed to turn the projector off, freeze it that would allow you to do so and then we have here our very classic infrared port although I hadn't a controller with this one okay so I've zoomed in a bit here on this lens uh, not too sure how well you can see but it is a bit dirty and um, to part of today's video, we're actually going to give this a spring cleaning, which we sped up just like the Dreamcast video. Watch it now if you haven't seen it. This here appears to be some sort of zoom. It looks like a halfway zoom out, or zoom in, and then zoom out at the bottom there. Okay, so from the left side, at first we can see here we've got a fan. And this does have a cover. So this is one that you can service and clean. Although you may notice it's actually missing the sponge filter to stop dust going into the actual unit. Um, we might be able to refurbish that and just stick a new pad on there. I'll see if we've got some. There is a very small switch down there. Now that would probably make me think that if that switch was um, in the open state while it was running, it would shut the projector down because obviously with this off, it could possibly be dangerous. Um, you could block it, you could clog it. So that's one little safety feature, I would guess. Put that cap back on. Go the right way the first time would be good. There we are. Okay, so looking behind the projector, again, we have a, another cap. This one's a little grubby, which we will probably have to clean up a bit. And also, again, there is another sensor. So definitely this does something in terms of the operation of the projector when these covers are taken off. This isn't too bad. It's a little dirty. We'll put this back on now again, just like the one before. And if we move down, another infrared sensor here. That looks like a speaker, uh, a rear-facing speaker, and also a little grill here, but again, that could be a speaker, so we'll find out in operation. And there's the nice NEC logo on the bottom. And finally, on the right side, we have a caution hot warning. Duh, they get hot. And it looks like a nice DC or AC fan. Uh, on the side here to output all the heat. Well, we're back on the tripod now, and I think the best thing that we can do is give it a general clean up on the surfaces. It doesn't look too, too bad. There's a few little scruffs. Again, this is quite heavy projector, this is a bit awkward. And here we go again, guys. We've got the same tools pretty much for the Dreamcast video. I've even brought one of these along as well to uh, aid light if we need it. So we've got our tweezers here, our clips. We've got our standard crosshead screwdriver, a very small flat head, a nice small cross, uh, or, sorry, crosshead screwdriver, and we've got ourselves, um, <laughs> well, I promise you that is soap on there, but anyway, we got ourselves some nice cleaner just to freshen it up a bit. Let's get on to the cleaning part. Because there's quite some static dust, I'm actually going to use this electrical tape and we're just going to pad along the rim here and just get rid of all the other bits of dust. And yes, I did realise actually that this was a big mistake because tissue breaks up. But we can always fix that problem later on. So here we go.
let's just see um, how much corrosion is actually on those connectors. We'll just use this strip, it's still dirty, but rust should come up brownish, so let's just see. Yeah, we can see that there. It's uh, just a peered look on the bit of um, electrical tape. So what we'll do is we'll just take these out and uh, we'll just zoom in there so you can see. But we'll remove these um, little screws and we'll uh, replace them with new ones. Okay, so I did have a quick look around for some more of these uh, little connections here for screwing on VGA cables. The only closest I've got is this one here that I can take off. Now I don't use this graphics card anymore, but I'll basically just put those ones onto the graphics card. So let's get on with that. Okay, let's remove these ones now. Well, that looks far much better now. I haven't got any for the bottom ones, however, but to be honest, it looks okay. I think it's actually time now that we take this apart and see inside it. Well, there we go, so the top's off and we can see all the lovely electronics inside here. And pretty much it's very similar to the other projectors I used to work on. So here we have the um, RGB, which are the, I believe are signals in for the RGB uh, colours which go down to a small light box which has the obviously RGB colours. Um, you've got your various fan connections and sensors. Now what you can actually do is if you disconnect one of those fans, the whole the, the unit won't turn on. It's uh, very clever. It does a little checksum on it. On the flip side of this board, obviously, you'd have the processor and the controller. Um, some of you may know some of these uh, chips here, or controllers. Uh, the one in particular that catches my eye is this one, which could that possibly be video memory? Um, again, I'm only speculating, so you have every right to believe it in the comments. And it even looks like they might have had the possibility of having XGA on here as well. So the tops look all right. Um, let's have a look at the fans here now. So fan-wise, that uh, this is the right side fan. It looks to be okay. Um, you always get a bit of dust that accumulates over time. And oh, oh, yeah, that speaker's quite dusty. Um, so I think we should clean that out. There we go, that's much, much better, more better. And on the left side, that generally looks okay. So, I know that was quite a short look on the insides of this uh, projector, but I figured now I might as well put it back together, power this thing on and see what it does. Okay guys, so we have a laptop here connected to the projector. The ultimate question is, will it work? I think it's time to find out. Here we go. Oh, we have something. I'm terribly sorry if the reflection's crazy. Oh, we have something. Hooray! So actually, that is what I'd expect to see. Let's see if we can boot it. And hey, it works. So, for a free projector, I'm sure I'll have some use out of it. Obviously, reflecting it on a piece of wood is not the best thing. The main thing is, it works.
Look at that. And there you go. So it works. Let's just turn it off. And just so I don't get copyrighted, there you go, mute that. Thanks for watching, subscribe for more.